research for that. Or maybe with the patent of the total that we're charging. I'll call this meeting the Palm County Board of Commissioners August 9th board meeting uh, together. Welcome our invited guests and elected officials. I see uh, Sheriff Kerry Gulledge. Any other elected officials in the room? Thank you all for being here. I'll remind you to turn off uh, your uh, electronic devices. And uh, somebody forgot that in an earlier meeting, so double check it. Uh, Marshall Franklin. Today, uh, we have Robbie Finley, director of the Paulin Fellowship of Christ Christian Athletes, to bring our invocation. Right after that, we will have the presentation of colors by Hiram High School Junior ROTC. Would you stand with me if you're able? Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to come in your presence once again with this group of people. Father, just to approach your throne of grace. I pray that if there's anything that will keep you from hearing from us this morning or this afternoon, that you'll forgive us of remove it from us because we'll lift up our elected officials who are standing before your native board of commissioners and their support teams. We'll lift them up to you, Father, with pure hearts. And ask you, Father, to give them the wisdom, the discernment, and the leadership they need, and the boldness and the courage that they need at different times, Father, uh, in their positions and in their day-to-day -day duties, Father, because they are under scrutiny a lot of times, Father. And just pray that you'll just give them the strength that they need to carry on and to per per persevere in all that they do. Father, we pray for their families, their kids, their grandkids, what, their wives, whatever it may be, Father. We just pray that you'll bless them, Father, and let them be proud of their family member that sits on this board of commissioners. And, Father, we know that you know their hearts, Father, so we pray that the things that they do, Father, that they are at peace with you. And, Father, we pray, I think there's some financial stuff that's going to be done today, Father. Just pray that you'll guide them in that. And I'm sure there's a lot of thought and things have been put into it, Father. Pray that it will be good for the future of our county and where we need to go. Thank you for the people that are here to witness it and maybe add some things to it or, or whatever they're going to do. Father, we just pray that you'll bless them and guide them as well. Father, we pray for our young people in this community, in this county. And pray, Father, that we can leave something behind that they will be proud of, Father, and want to be a part of and can take it to even the next level that people all over the country will look at our county and see, Father, a place that they want to emulate and be like. So help us do that. Help us leave that behind. Most of all, help us honor you in what we do and help us give you the honor, the praise, and the glory for it all at all times. And also let me remember those two students that was in accident up there in North Palmer this morning, Father. We pray that you'll meet them right where they are and bless those parents as they are trying to... Um, meet the needs of those kids and bless those doctors. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
little excited, ladies and gentlemen. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good night, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Robin. Beautiful prayer. Minutes action on July 25th, 2016, work session minutes and July 25th, 2016, board meeting minutes and July 25th, 2016, first public hearing on the millage rate, the July 25th, 2016, second public hearing on the millage rate minutes. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Here unanimously. Announcements, the Board of Commissioners regular uh, meeting previously scheduled on September the 13th for a two o'clock uh, session will be postponed till seven. Uh, we will be selling uh, water and sewer bonds that day and they will need that time to get prepared. So uh, the meeting will be moved to seven o'clock. So remember on the 13th, it will move from Two o'clock to seven o'clock. There are no invited guests, no bid awards, <coughs> reports from committees and departments, none. Public participation on agenda items, uh, a pretty long list. Uh, Sarah Justice Faulkner, 329 Powder Mill Court, Special Use Permit. Come to the left. Yeah. Sarah Justice Faulkner, 1,000 signatures against this pawn shop from opening. Um, we don't want it to happen. We respectfully request that the Board of Commissioners would uphold the zoning and planning motion of deny. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ricky Faulkner, 329 Powder Mill, special use permit. Ricky Faulkner. I am the owner of County Line Thrift Store. We are located directly across the street from 4088 Charles Hardy Parkway. This was never intended to be a personal issue on our behalf. We just <coughs> happened to be the ones who've seen the sign for a public hearing for a special use permit for a pawn shop and brought it to the attention of our community. I'm politely requesting that the Board of Commissioners uphold the planning and zoning motion to deny the special use permit. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Wallace, 454 Quill Hollow Drive, special use permit. <coughs> Uh, thank you. Um, I've been sent here by the my church, Four Pie Hill Catholic Church, on this um, pump shop. Uh, they have to request to, to deny this for the safety of the community and also daycares. Our church is has uh, opened up a case system for person, and we want to keep the community safe with that. Uh, I'd like to ask the board to deny this because I like to see it on the news that an adult child, anybody has been killed by guns, breaking in palm shops. These um it's been on the news about every day. And I like to say this board is to deny it on behalf of my church. Also a daycare also want me to speak for him to to deny this also. Thank you. Christina Anderson, five sixty four Davis Mill Road, special use permit. I was just coming to say that my opinion is the same as it was when we spoke at the last meeting, um, if not stronger, on my uh, opinion of denying the special use permit. Um, I 
appreciate the zoning board and, and all the work that put into it and the work that y'all put into this. And I hope that that you consider our request. Thanks. Anne Marie Georgiana. Georgiana. I just wanted to say that I'm very proud of the way that Planning and Zoning did their research on this particular issue, and I really hope that the board members will also do the same and look at all of the information that's been presented to them, and you'll consider this research, but also consider the hard work that Planning and Zoning has put forth. I hope that you uphold the vote for denial. Thank you. Susan Haynes, 209 Hart Circle, Dallas. I'm Susan Haynes, and I am um, a vendor at Meat County Library Store, as well as an owner of another business here in the county. And I'm here to ask you to deny the special use permit. I don't want to see our county become known as a county of pawn shops. And I think we have plenty here already. Um, I would like to see our county move forward and do um, what we can to make it the best it can be. Luke Newbern, Seals Drive, Dallas. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Luke Newborn, owner of a Lucas Company LLC of Georgia, uh, as well as Good Deal Wholesale LLC of Georgia, uh, citizen of Paulding County. Uh, I did want to speak to our elected officials today, as well as our citizens. Um, Fortunately, I'm very proud for doing their research uh, on this matter and presenting some very great evidence. Uh, to the last committee as well as to you guys. Um, I do have to call into question some of the personal behavior I've seen on this possible business owner Pawling County that disturbs me, which you can see in your notes. Um, harassment um, to our citizens in Paulding. Um, also, you'll note in the notes that Mayor Bloomberg of New York actually has brought legal action against um, this particular business um, in illicit gun sales with Adventure Outdoors of uh, Smyrna. Also, I'd like to call into question pawn shops in general. Uh, any pawn shops I know in Douglas County and other areas are not areas that I tend to frequent uh, because of the type of perceptions that, that brings on the community, which as a Paulding citizen, uh, and fre frequenter of Hiram, Dallas, I don't want to see. Uh, on top of that, physical attributes of the exact location uh, for this zoning is also something I'd like to call into question. There is not adequate parking. There is not adequate lighting at night. It is a very dimly lit area at night. Brings concern to myself and my citizens about the safety if this pawn shop were to be broken into. A daycare right down the road. A local school. Our local churches also vehemently are against this concept of having a pawn shop. Not to mention this particular county also had a moratorium on pawn shops, which unfortunately expired in December. I believe the county wouldn't have spent their resources or time had there not been a need to have a moratorium on pawn shops. I would like to uh, respectfully ask you guys to deny a request to change the zoning. I hope I brought some very good points, and also I hope you can see that your citizens certainly are all urging a no vote on this matter. Thank you for your time. I will make a correction uh, in your comments. Uh, Bloomberg <coughs> sued 25 to 50 yes, sir. pawn shops, uh, and uh, he lost that lawsuit. Yes, sir. So, just to set the record straight, uh, doing homework, you've got to say that they lost. Yes, sir. Bloomberg lost that. It, as, as a citizen, it disturbs me that there was even a need for a lawsuit to be brought to them. Uh, with over 250 illicit gun sales uh, mentioned, that disturbs me. Uh, and I hope it disturbs you as well. But I do thank you for, for pointing out that fact. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda action on one consent agenda item to a hear motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any against? Uh, here's my vote. No old business. Under new business, action authorizing the chairman to issue a contract the Trans Systems Incorporated in the amount of $160,771.44 for engineering design services for the Swan Drive drainage uh, project. This is in Hushburg. Motion to approve. 
Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any against? Passes by vote. Action to authorize the chairman to a contract with the Wilburn Engineering LLC in the amount of $498,123.01 for engineering design service. Advanced Traffic Management System Expansion Phase Project 1. So I your motion. Motion <coughs> approved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Carries 5 0. Uh, action to authorize the chairman to enter into a contract with Wilburn Engineering LLC in the amount of $366,272.51 for engineering design services. Advanced Traffic Management System Expansion Phase 2 Project. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? I will note that uh, this and the previous one uh, are 50% are, uh, match with the federal government. Scott, 50% match. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Number four, action to adopt resolution 1630 authorizing a voter referendum on whether to allow package sales on Sunday by referring <coughs> a package of malt beverages and wine. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? I would like to say that I received several phone calls on this and I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled by it in a way. <coughs> In uh, 2013, this was put on a referendum, it was put on a ballot, a special ballot, it was it lost. And I think it cost the county some money to do that. But um, I don't feel like that, uh, that we should deprive the people of being able to vote for this. Whether I approve of it or not, I think that the citizens should be allowed to vote for this. Any other discussion? Just like just a clarification, this would be, just to say it again, this would be on the November ballot for the presidential election. Right, it would be a special question on that ballot, which would be listed um, at the end of the ballot. Yeah, I've had um, some calls since this came out, but I had some before. It was, um, it missed the date and thought we'd missed the date, so I was glad to see this come forward in time. Uh, and I we haven't missed the date as long as I get down there by five. Right, I thought we missed the date. <laughs> I thought we missed the date a couple weeks. Uh, no, couple we're weeks okay, and I, I can read the question again if, if y'all want me to read the question. The ballot question, the ballot question would read, shall the governing authority of Pauling County be authorized to permit and regulate package sales by retailers of malt, beverage, and wine on Sundays between the hours of 12.30 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. and it would have a yes or no vote block. Any other discussion? Although it may not be something that I'm interested in, I, I feel like it's something that we need to take to the voters and allow the voters to decide. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Here's five votes. Number five, action adopt resolution 16-31, setting the millage rate for the county. I put out the chairman's budget and um, Military rate I proposed was 6.188, so I'll put that in the form of a motion. I need a second. Second. Motion and second. Uh, any discussion? Yes, I, I guess I'd like to say. It's been pointed out to me a couple of times. And I made the statement that I would not vote to raise the taxes in the county. You know, um, that was a bad mistake on my part, I'm going to tell you why. And I'm sorry that I said that, but I'm going to tell you, I did not realize, not ever been an officer, that uh, if you left the military rate the same, that you were actually voting for a tax increase. I don't deny when I tell something, I don't crawfish, I own it. And I'm owning this. <coughs> I've watched the county for seven plus years now, roll 
whole village back every year. While the county employees go without raises, while they take furlough days, and while the services of the county fall short of what they should be. <coughs> Nobody likes high taxes. <coughs> I probably pay as much taxes as a, an average homeowner as anybody in this room does. I live on 17 acres with two houses. I have another piece of property over off 381. And I have the misfortune only a little bit in Cobb County. Everybody pays taxes, not just one family in this county. We all pay them. I got a daughter that lives at the reserves of a pretty nice home. I don't know what her taxes are. I'm sure that she don't want them. They don't want them to go up. I don't want them. I don't think it's the right thing to do to support <coughs> this rollback. I think it's going to hurt us. In fact, there's no doubt in my mind it's going to hurt us. Next year, we're going to be saddled with something sure enough. There's several of the department heads that have called me in and talked to me about <coughs> what are they going to do about help. What are we going to do in the county? And once again, the county employees go another year without any kind of raises. There have been people sitting in this room that's held my feet to the fire about making that commitment. To commit to not raising taxes once again, I want to apologize for that. I'm so sorry that I did that. If I have a reputation for anything, it's for doing what I say I'm going to do. <coughs> the right thing to do is to leave this millage rate where it is and take care of this county. That's the right thing to do. <clears throat> I've talked with other commissioners <coughs> and other people and I've told them where my heart is. But I did make that commitment. And unlike other people in this county, made a commitment and then didn't honor it. I'm not that man. If I break that commitment, I'm no better man than they are. The best thing to do is to leave that middle like it is. That instead of rolling it back, we can roll this thing back to 08. I'm a man of conviction, a man of faith, and I believe God's able to fix this thing if I'm honored my commitment. I'm not happy with having to do it, but I want it to be said right now. Next year, I can't help raising the taxes. It's going to happen. We're being put in a position where there's no way in this world that we can do this. We can't continue to do this. It makes whole business sense. Oh, I ran a business since 1973. There's been numerous times that I had to make adjustments to my prices due to the fact that materials went up, labor went up, expenses go up. I had to do it. That's good business. You don't like doing it, but you do it. So what's been done to this county, I want you to I want you to know something. This board here, these four men here, has never voted to make this county a debt. We have the water as one that was voted on by the people. We have supported it. But this board has not made this county a debt. 
we have dealt with, dealt with debts that was here when we got here that we can't help. But once again, I want to apologize to those that I said that to, and I'm going to honor it. But there's no way in this world I can honor it next year. I can't do it. <coughs> And it's going to hurt the county employees. I've made some promises or talked to some that we're going to try to add some stuff and we're going to work on that. But it just absolutely breaks my heart. I've wrestled with this for three weeks. Another commissioner know it. I've talked to them. A lot of time in prayer about it. But honoring my commitment is going to hurt this county. But there are those of you out there who want to do a character assassination on me if I said you said it, and I did. There's nobody sitting in front of me out here that hadn't told a lie, whether you meant to or not. I can name several times I made a promise to my son that I had to break him from the circumstances changed. But he loved me anyhow. That's not the way it is in politics. They'll take the truth and they'll destroy it, and they'll run it back in on them. My character has never been within question, and I'm not going to let it be now. Thank you. Again, when we talk about millage rate, uh, I had to raise the millage rate. Uh, we went through some very desperate times. Uh, your property values failed. We had to operate the county. So to say that we've done rollback, of uh, millage rate, we, we have not. Uh, in fact, I think it was probably 2012 uh, before we were able to uh, start rolling back the millage. When I came up with that idea that we'd have to raise millage to bring in the same amount of taxes that we did a year before, because property values had fallen, I was accused of you will never roll that back. You'll just take it and increase the size of county government. Uh, I'm like uh, Mr. Crow, I want to keep my pledge. I said at the time that I would uh, roll back the millage. And I mentioned it this morning. You've got wants, and they're anywhere from 25 to 45 million dollars more uh, than what you see in the budget today. And there's needs, uh, which I've always produced for you, and under all we have to, a balanced budget. So rolling the millage rate back to 6.188 is uh, makes us even with the last year. That's a commitment that I made that I feel like I need uh, to honor the uh, Also, uh, any other discussion? to the employees of this county that will continue to work on things over the next six weeks for the month of August and September. And hopefully get some things worked out, Mr. Clay. say we don't need to cry. Some folks can say you talk too much. If you only knew the time and prayer that some of these guys have spent. This is my sixth budget. And for 
five of them six years, there have been wise counsel on this board now and in the past that have said we cannot continue to work on the budget <coughs> that's bringing in the money from 10 years ago. We cannot do it. You've heard me say it. It's been said by Mr. Tommy Graham. We've said it over and over and over again. We've worked on this new budget, and we've worked on rolling the mills back from 6.528 to 6.5. We've had public meetings. We've listened to the public. We've taken emails and phone calls. We've done our job. I don't think rolling it back to 6.188 is the correct thing to do. I don't think we're doing the right thing. I appreciate Mr. Crow's heart. <coughs> and if y'all could have been in our shoes today and see how things would have gone, been rather interesting. Mr. Klett and I came together this afternoon with some of the same thoughts, the same heart. And I think Mr. Crow is making the right decision. And I support him on that decision. I don't think that the last four weeks has been a waste of time. I think we've done the county's business right here in front of you, of which I think is the utmost important thing. The decisions are made in front of you. Whether you agree, whether you don't agree, whether you think we're right or we're wrong, no matter what side we're on or whatever issue it is, this is where it's done. Not in the back room, not somewhere else, not out of the county, right here. This is where it's done. I commit to the employees that we're going to look real hard at quite a few things over the next six weeks on several things. We're going to look at several things in this budget. We're going to look at several things when it comes to homestead exemption. We're going to move forward. We're going to do what we got to do with what we've been given. Mr. Chairman, you're here with us till December 31st. And in the name of unity, We're going to vote for your military in the name of unity. And then we're going to work with what we got, whatever it takes, to make some decisions and change some directions. And like Mr. Crow said, next year we got some decisions to make. It won't be the same conversation coming from this seat if Lord still has me sitting here next year. I'm done. Again, I post this budget on June 1. No consideration or discussion happened until four weeks. So I'm just letting you know there was a long time to have discussion. Uh, to start talking about homestead exemption and several other things, and it did not happen until four weeks ago. So uh, you know the door is always open. Uh, you, you all have called me and you sent me emails. Uh, you thank me for holding down the taxes, and uh, I, I'm not here. Just for the county employees, I'm here for all the taxpayers and taxes in this county. Uh, I love the employees. I 
doing the day to day operation. Nobody knows more about what they give and do than I do. <coughs> Last year I published a budget that had uh, increases for them, and it was amended uh, to give them buyback of the leave. So this year I didn't do increases and I put buyback of the leave. Uh, so, you, you know, it's hard to please people all the time, but I feel like when you say you're going to produce a balanced budget and not do a tax increase, uh, you don't hear that. And that's outstanding. There's been a motion, there's been a second. All in favor? I'd like to say, I'm sorry, say something right there. Um, first, I want to, Todd and Gordon, I want to say thank you um, for the hard work that you put in on driving this discussion. Last year as a citizen, Todd, I remember Todd saying something about advertising not to roll back so there could be a discussion. Um, and when, when you said that, Todd, I don't, I didn't agree at the time. I, um, I'm on the other side of the table now, and I understand where you're going with that. And there's been some good discussion here, um, and I appreciate you taking the lead on that, both of you. The, the talk of the, the homestead exem exemption increase, I think we need to look at it. We need to see what we can do to be more competitive in that area. Um, next year's not going to be easy. I mean, every one of us who will, every one of us up here uh, understand that. Um, I spent some time with uh, Tony at his house and running around town a little bit on, on Sunday and just talking. And, Tony, I appreciate you. You're, um, you're an asset to this county. To the, to the people here, I, I hope you, uh, despite any disagreements you may have, can appreciate the, um, the gentlemen that are here representing you behind this table. I know there's a lot of anguish that's going into this meeting. Um, doing right, doing what you Knowing your heart is right is not always is not always easy, and, and we're learning that firsthand a little bit this week. So I just want to thank you, gentlemen. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Carried five votes. Action to adopt resolution 16-32 setting the village rate for the fire district. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second any discussion. I think uh, what we're looking at, Tabitha, if you correct me, is adopting a 3.1. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Village rate. Yes, sir. Uh, should that be included? Yes. It's in the resolution. It's not that it's in the written resolution. Okay. We talked about it this morning, but I'm not part of all of these. Okay. 3.1. Uh, we've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Here's five of them. Action to adopt resolution 16-33, setting the village rate for the county bond. The village rate is 2.07. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any days? Carries five. Action to adopt resolution 16-34 said the village rate for the county school district. Uh, that was brought to us by the school district. That amount is 18.879, which is exactly the same as last year. That's correct. Uh, do I hear a motion? Since to approve. Is there a second? Second that motion to second any discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Carries my vote. Action to adopt resolution 16 35, setting the village rate for the state of Georgia. We discussed this earlier. This is really <coughs> zero. Uh, one of the easiest I think we're going to ever have to vote on. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second any discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any nays? Here's five votes. Action to adopt resolution 16-36 authorizing the tax commission to retain a 2.5% fee for collecting school taxes. Is there a motion? 
Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, action to approve the fiscal year 2017 with a millage rate of 6.188. That budget would be $139,110,700. Thank you your motion. Motion to table for two weeks. Second. Motion to table for two weeks. Second. Any more discussion? The reason that I want to do that is because we've approved the millage rate. Mr. Watson can do his job and get the ball rolling, which is what we need to do. And we can work on this budget a little bit more. Some people may think there's not much to work on, but <coughs> it gives an opportunity. <coughs> if that's okay with Tabitha, if I get that head. That's fine. Okay. Um, I think that's what we need to do, and, um, and we'll bring it back in two weeks. Get this thing done. All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? That it passes forward. Uh, number 12, uh, action on to adopt resolution 16-37, confirming the executive session for the purposes of real estate, land acquisition, potential, and pending litigation. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Carries five votes. Uh, items that came to us from the July 26, 2016, 2 p.m. Planning Commission meeting. Uh, you see those attacks. 2016-04-SUP uh, application by Jason Wallace on approximately 3.84 acres, suite F only, for special use permit for a pawn shop. Property is located in Land Launch 145, District 19, Section 2, on the south side of the State Route 120 a.k.a. Charles Hardy Parkway, directly south of East Pauline Drive at the Cobb County Line. This is 4088 Charles Hardy Parkway. It is in post one. Uh, recommendation, recommendation for denial, uh, three, two, one, with uh, three stipulations. Uh, before we get into having discussion, there's been a lot of discussion in the Planning Commission and in this, uh, pitting one business against another. I feel like we need to uh, vote on a business on its own merits, not how uh, or if it's more popular than another business. Uh, just to bring businesses in the Pauling County and let them know we have an atmosphere uh, for business. So do I hear a motion? Motion to deny. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. I'll make a motion uh, to approve. Is there a second? Are you making a motion to approve with the stipulations? Yes. Make a motion to approve with the three stipulations. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Yeah. I um, I said just a minute ago that doing doing what you believe is right is not always easy, and this is one of those times. Um, twice in the last couple of minutes now. Um, Welcome. <laughs> um, David, you're right. You can't pit a business against a business and select the winner. And so I've, I've heard from the community in Post One, I've heard from the community outside of Post One, people who frequent that shopping center um, from other counties. And there are concerns about what's going to happen uh, in the area. One of the, one, of the, one of the bullet points under the use of the special use permit has to do with the um, adverse effect on the neighborhood or the area where the special use permit will go. And um, I've, I've, done, I've done the work, and I've met with, um, I've met with everyone here. I've met with uh, the owners of that thrift store, and I've heard their concerns. Uh, I believe them to be honest concerns. I've, heard, I've met with the, the, the applicant. I've heard, I've heard what he has to say. I, I believe 
his response to their concerns is, is an honest response. I um, I, th I think we, th this, there have been some concerns here that I've had uh, with this process. Um, and, and, and I want to say first, though, that I, I appreciate um, both sides, Mr. Wallace, Mr. Faulkner, um, and all the citizens who have spoken on both sides of this. I appreciate the way that you have rallied people in the community for your cause. Uh, before I sat behind this microphone, I was a citizen activist um, for a number of issues, for a number of campaigns. And I know firsthand the difficulty that it is that you can have getting people to rally to you and, and support you in something that you're very passionate about. And, and I appreciate the, the community speaking out on this. I have gotten hundreds, literally hundreds of emails uh, about this. One of, the, one of the concerns that I've had with this is, is that um, uh, Mr. Wallace, the, uh, the advertisement that Adventure Outdoors is coming to Baldwin County came out after the rejection from planning and zoning. When we spoke on the phone, you told me that you wanted the pawn shop as a starting place to build a bigger pawn shop on what I've since learned to be a three-acre three acre piece of land farther down 120. There was no mention of Adventure Outdoors. Jay? Um, Bring Adventure Outdoors to Paulding, I can tell you it'll be a huge success. I'll back you 100% in that. Anything you need, I'll do for you. But this isn't about Adventure Outdoors coming to Paulding County. This is about a pawn shop coming to Paulding County in an area where people have honest concerns, where I have honest concerns about what will happen in that, in that area should, that, should this business locate there. There was a... Um, I, I uh, at the request of one of the state representatives, who's a friend of Mr. Of the Wallace family, um, he put us together and we sat down and had lunch. I had lunch with the, the applicant, Jason, his father, Jay, and we we talked through a lot of our concerns and just we had a good lunch and it was a, it was a good it was a good meeting. I am. Um, I don't remember the day, Jason, but it was a few. Earlier in this week, maybe you sent an email that said that you, you felt you were being bullied by a, by a um, another business owner in the county. Everyone here was copied on that email. We've all seen that. And you you sat at that table on Friday and you looked me in the eye and you said, for the third time that I've spoken to you, you said I'm a bridge builder. You said that the first time we spoke on the phone, you said that from that podium in that planning and zoning meeting, you said it to me there on Friday when we had lunch. And I, to be honest with you, I felt bad because I believed that this isn't the right location for your business. But I, my heart went out to you. And um, I advised you to contact the other they're the commissioners, and that you would be wise to speak with them. And I left that meeting with this, with this feeling that I, I need to do what I know is right, but that it wasn't going to be easy. And then later Friday afternoon, later Friday afternoon, it came to my attention that you had been using those bullying tactics on that local business. With the registration of their website, redirecting to your pawn store in Smyrna and making a making an active attempt to to hurt someone who is um, who I believe has honest concerns about your business that bothers me it appears and I have spoken with the four gentlemen to my left um, and I've told them what I was going to do in this meeting and I asked them to make an honest decision for themselves. That I wasn't going to ask them um, to do one thing or another. I told them what I'm doing and why I feel this way. 
I told them, I told them my concerns. And as commissioner in this seat, I've, I've, I've done my job. I can honestly say that. I can honestly say that, um, that all the work has been done in this. Um, Mr. Wallace, if, if this board votes to approve your request, I would um, ask you that you go out of your way um, to be as good friends with the Faulkners as you can be. I think that would also include um, perhaps a transfer of a domain name. You're obviously not obligated to do that, but for me to you, that would be my recommendation. <coughs> I would also ask that you keep that dialogue open. Um, Mr. Faulkner, I'd ask that you be open to that. Um, you two grown men, or we can we can handle things um, as adults, whether we agree with what happens or whether we don't. And uh, should this board vote that way, I ask that you guys work very hard to be good. Discussion. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, Mr. Wallace, I, I, I agree. I don't like the idea that you took the name of County Line Thrift Store and it registered and then redirected it to the website. Both of you men stood up here and said you were Christians. Both of you used your churches and yet you do that. I hope that's not the way you do business. We can't force you to do that. We're not judges. But a business is a business, and I think I have to separate that from any other decision. But I would like to see you give that over to them, too. Do you have any discussion? <coughs> I'll call them. Call. Don't call again. There's three listed stipulations. One of the things that came up during planning the zoning, and, and I believe it was mentioned in here today, was lighting in the back of that parking lot. Is that correct? Yes. That issue was brought up. That's my concern. This is going to be voted on with these three stipulations. I'd like to see something that would, would take care of some lighting issues back there. Because I agree, I was over there yesterday, and uh, I was there during the day. But I think there could be some issues in that back parking lot with lighting. Uh, spent a lot of time talking with several folks. Didn't quite get as many emails as Ron. Ron's had a few tough weeks also on this issue, and I will agree that uh, there's been talk about bridge builders, and no matter what happens after this vote, bridge building part needs to happen, in my opinion. Um, churches have been brought up into it. All of us up here go to church. We have our views. And you've got to be careful bringing us to church, especially if you're not treating each other right. I'm not a judge. None of us are. And I don't know whose fault it is. I don't know that this one's a 50-50. It could be a 60-40 or a 70-30 or a 75-25. You can pick whichever side you fit in, but there's issues. We're neighbors. We live in the same community. And I think a lot of issues came up on this issue through planning and zoning that didn't need to be talked about in planning and zoning. They had a job to do, and it turned into a whole lot more that day. That's not the way to, to do business. So if we're bridge builders, we're men of faith, church goers, doing the right thing, 
whatever this turns out at the end of this vote needs to happen. Needs to happen for the community. Lights. I know there's a motion in a second with the three stipulations. <coughs> I'm up for suggestions, or if y'all don't want to put that in there, I'd like to see something because it's been brought up several times. Well, uh, we, we should bring that up with the owner uh, of this facility. Uh, I, I don't think they're in a position to put up lighting parking lot where they don't, they don't own that. I think that has to come from um, the shopping center owner. Uh, I'll be glad to, if that's something you want me to do, to call him in and meet with him and tell him like, we, we need a flight. Are there more? That's, that's close to a residential area. There's a neighborhood that backs up against that. I believe there was mention of that in the planning zone meeting about concerns about light pollution and that close neighborhood. I, I might be remembering that incorrectly, but I don't know. That's, that's what I thought I heard. passes, I don't want it to be dark back there. I know there's park lighting like we have where there's a few off the trail and it, it's longer. There is and it, it has, um, um, that's what I described, those boxes around it so it points down as opposed to, as opposed to out. So, <coughs> two different kinds of lighting. But uh, you still have, you still do have the problem of whether or not these people would have the ability to put up lights, given that they're a tenant, as opposed to the owner of the you don't own the parking lot. No, ma'am. It would have to be a discussion with the property owner of the parking lot specifically. I'll be glad to have that conversation. That's something. If it passes, bridge builders, there's got to be some <coughs> build bridges. I'm going to say this before we get it over with. Uh, Ron Davis has done his due diligence. He uh, will, be, will be a couple of hours Sunday at the church. I don't know why this decision is so hard, why it should be made so hard. And I just think we got off the wrong foot, the wrong, wrong foot between you two guys. Um, you have an established business there, and you come in. I don't, I don't know that I understand all that did happen. I really don't. But uh, the offers to me are just absolutely wonderful people. Wallace and their entrepreneurs are looking to do something. And uh, I've been, like I said before, I've been in business a long time, and there's not, through the years, not ever been a drywall contractor that was competing against me that could sit down and have a cup of coffee with me at any given time. Uh, if I have a problem with one of them, I don't know do that. I said, this decision should not be near as hard as it is. Ron worked on his car, but the mission us talked. Ron and I spent like a couple of hours together. We wouldn't sit in my driveway. We'd spend that time with putting this thing to the county. And uh, I feel good working on the board of commissioners like we have here. They don't, they don't go home and just forget an issue. They, they dive into it. I appreciate all you guys. And right now, especially you. I'll call the question. There's been a motion and a second uh, for approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Any nay? Nay. 
assets for one. 2016-01 TAA application by Christine Reese for a text amendment to change the Paulding County Zoning Ordinance, Article 8, Section M, 2B1, General Business District, to add as a permitted use, auto broker office only, no vehicles on size of one. Tell us a little bit about this. It's somewhat unusual that we do have a text amendment that is originated by a person, but that is what happened in this case. If she's asking that you amend the B1 zoning category to allow um, this type of business to be an auto bro broker office where she would not be buying or selling vehicles on the site. Everything that she, she'd just be having an office location and otherwise it would be an online business. So she would be taking the orders online and doing that paperwork, but people would not be coming to that business to pick up cars. So are you saying this is a home-based business? It's, no, um, I believe she wants to do that in, in um, like a shopping center front but she would not be having in that parking lot cars that she is buying or selling. But it does change the through the entire county. It does, so it would be more than just her. It's not a special use permit or something that's applicable to her. It would open up the category to allow this in any B1 zoning in the county. So if this would never come back before us again, it would automatically allow for it would be a permitted use in the general business category. That's what she's asking for. It changes the ordinance itself. It's a text amendment. The policing of this uh, seems to me that with one, we're good. If we get multiple uh, policing efforts, does that fall on the marshals? Does that fall on uh, community development? It's both ordinarily when complaints come in, they come into community development, and then community development would ask the marshals to investigate it. So the answer is both. So if you end up having a business, for instance, where they are buying and selling cars on the lot, and they're trying to do it under this category, the complaint would likely come into the Slipman's office of community development, and then she would have to send the marshals to investigate it. heard some discussion. Uh, is there a motion? It was recommended for approval 501. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Uh, now discussion. Hearing no discussion, motion and second. Are you? Sir.
taking a step back and considering um, considering ramifications that we don't do something quickly. Um, but if this is really is just a, a change that would allow paperwork to be done for this type of business, um, I, I don't personally see that as a problem. And we don't have a uh, other business update. Okay. Uh, I know we have an applicant that brought this before plan and zone, but um, and your department could do this also correctly, correct? Oh yes. If they chose to do that. Yeah, the board commissioners, the planning commission, anybody can initiate a text amendment, like the public can as well. But we can certainly, if you were wanting to table it, to find out exactly how much land it affects, we can get how many properties are zoned B1, and perhaps how many businesses are located on those properties to let you know what the potential impact would be. Process would be the same regardless of whether the board of commissioners initiated a tax amendment, Camino Elephant did, or a property owner. We still advertise, we still hold public hearing, and we still come up with support, so the process is identical. Any more discussion? I'd just like to see us look at it a little bit more. Because it's not just for the applicant, it's not a special use permit. We have motion on the changes. I would send a motion. Can I do that? You can rescind your motion because you made the motion. Do you want to do it? I rescind my motion. And I'd like to make motions to table to, to the next meeting. Been rescinded. Uh, do you have to get the second percent? No, he no. can rescind the motion because he made the motion. Now you do need a motion on the motion to table until our next meeting, which today is twenty third of August. Is that your motion? Yes. Uh, we now have a motion to uh, tackle this matter to August the twenty third. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion is second. Any discussion on this? You want to get, you want to get on it pretty quick and yeah. work on that? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any days? Uh, carries 4-1. Um, that is the conclusion of a regular session. We do not have an executive session. Public participation on non-agenda items. Um, we have Scott. I'm so listening. <laughs> Plaza, uh, Americans with Disability Act. Uh, if you'll come to the lectern and speak into the microphone. I'm sure you have time minutes. It'll be short. I just know why are my rights under the Americans with Disability Act still being violated? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. Speaking that not a problem. I need to know why my my rights are being violated by my disability act. Your rights are being violated. Can you address this? And you are welcome. You can speak for him as his companion. You can. We needed his name on the agenda, but you can speak for him. I am here before you today to bring to the attention of the whole board that the resolution 15-32 signed into effect on October 13, 2015 has been violated by those that have been appointed to ensure its compliance. Specifically, in regards to section 2-168F, within 15 calendar days after receipt of the complaint, ADA coordinator or her designee 
will meet with the complainant to discuss the complaint and the possible resolutions. This meeting has not taken place. Within 15 calendar days of the meeting, the ADA coordinator or her designee will respond in writing, where appropriate, in a format accessible to the complaint, such as large print. This has not happened. The response will explain the position of the Poland County Board of Commissioners and offer options for substantive resolution of the complaint. This has not happened. In section 2-168G, if the response by the ADA coordinator or the designee assigned does not satisfactorily resolve the issue, the complainant and or his or her designee may appeal the decision within 15 calendar days after receipt of the response to the chairman of the Board of Commissioners for review. We also have issues with section 2-166C, the complaint. A written grievance by a person with an alleged disability requesting review by the Pauline County ADA coordinator. A written grievance by a person with an alleged disability that needs to be revised. In requesting to be placed on the agenda for today's meeting, Mr. Scott Abbasolo was denied having advocates speak to him on his behalf. But Ms. Skipper allowed me to do that. In further violation of, of this part, um, in order to be effective, auxiliary aids and services must be provided in accessible formats in a timely manner and in such a way as to protect the privacy and independence of the individual with a disability. Now with that said, I would like to bring it to the attention of the whole board that Ms. Skipper had emailed copies of the filed grievance and her response to 13 different individuals. Explain to me how that protects Scott's privacy and independence. I can only imagine to whom she would have disclosed private HIPAA protected information to had we included it as part of requesting accommodations. Why would she, and I quote, I am sending a copy of this ordinance to those persons and agencies listed in the copy section below to serve as a notice to those entities of this response. Where in section 2-168, does that give her authority to do that? Especially if we do not know what other comments that she may have made to the individuals on her list that will now cause those individuals to further retaliate and discriminate against Scott because of his disabilities. I have a copy of this letter for each one of you, and then it's attached as a copy of the list of individuals that Ms. Skipper had emailed. Uh, we thank you for your time and attention to this matter. We look forward to a prompt and equitable resolution to this grievance complaint as provided by 28 CFR section 35107B. I'm just saying you can continue. That's it. Yeah. I got it in time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Would you like a copy of it? Do you have a copy of this? Do you Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All favor say aye. Aye.